thanks everybody for being here. As you all know, my name is George Headley. We're going to start our webinar, Build Wealth Via Real Estate Development. Make sure you all have a copy of your handout. I also sent out an Excel spreadsheet of some of the formulas and the pro forma that we're going to use today and cover. Uh, if you didn't get it, email me, ghhardhatbizcoach.com, and I'll be sure to send it uh, with the recap. All right. We're recording today, so uh, you'll get a link to that at the end as well. And uh, then I'm going to post it up on YouTube. You can find it on my YouTube channel. Just type in George Headley YouTube. All right. So let's get going. Uh, today, we're going to talk about the real estate development. You know, finding, building, renting, leasing, owning, developing your own building or buildings for lease. We're going to talk about maybe partnerships, how you can do more with a few of your friends that might want to invest with you. So we're going to cover all the scenarios along those lines. And we're going to get rolling here. All right. So let's get going. Um, we've got a handout, page two, page two of the handout. And we're just doing a little introduction about encouraging you to start an investment program. And then we're going to get into the nuts and bolts and what you have to do to find some deals and find some real estate and uh, put your money in it. And hopefully it works out great for you over time. It's amazing what inflation will do for real estate development. Uh, I've got projects I bought you know, 20 plus years ago that were about 3 million. Now they're worth 15 million. So it's a pretty nice way to build a future. Uh, so here we go. All right. So most of you know me. My name is George Headley. I'm a construction business coach. I was a general contractor for many years. A couple of pictures here on the right, a couple of buildings I developed with a partner or two. And that's uh, that's all great. That's all great. So I got the contractor fee and I got ownership and some we leased, some we sold. So let's talk about uh, building a business. So if you need some help with a real estate idea or two, you can always hire me as a coach. I've worked with a handful of my clients on a regular basis, designing their site, laying it out, doing the budget, figuring out what they need for the bank, all those kinds of things. So if I can help, that's why I'm here. Anyway, so today, uh, you know, I'll know more. I've got a book out. You can get it on Amazon. And today we're going to talk about building wealth, building wealth uh, today about real estate. You know, other people can help you with stocks and bonds and other sorts of investments. That's not my specialty. I'm a real estate uh, contractor. You know, I don't know if I'm a one to go into construction because I like to build or I like to build stuff that I can own and keep and lease, right? So let's uh, continue on. <clears throat> let's think about your company. So why are you in business? You know, what's the purpose for your business? The purpose for your business is give the owners what you want. What do you want? I know you want to build wealth. I know you want to have passive income. I know you want to have money, mailbox money coming in every day and every week. But what are you doing about it? If you don't commit to do it, it ain't going to happen. So what do you have to do to start building what you want? So first thing we have to do is, you know, uh, as an entrepreneur, business owner, contractor, masonry, metal, whatever you do, concrete, construction business owner, whatever you want. The first thing you have to do is decide, I want my business to give me what I want. So I have to clearly define my vision of what I want. One of my top visions when I was in my early 20s was to own real estate. It was in my blood. My, bab, my dad was a developer, and um, I went out on my own at 27 years old. And one of the first things I did is I started buying real estate. I bought a little duplex, rented it out. <laughs> Excuse me. Then I refinanced it, and then I bought another one, and then, you know, on and on and on. So I've been doing this since the mid, well, when I was late 20s. And uh, it's been the best thing I ever did was start early. Every year you wait, you know, every year we say, well, it's so expensive. Well, it's not going to go down. And if it does, it'll come back up. You know, everybody's houses went down about three or four years ago, and then they all doubled in the last, at least a 50% increase in the last four years. So, you know, we might have a little recession, rates are high, but, you know, you still got a great value there if you picked off some real estate investments, right? So I want my business to give me what I want. And when guys call me for help and gals call me for help, you know, what's your vision? What are we trying to accomplish here? And when we draft your business vision, we all, I always have a line that says investments. Your business is built to give you investments, not money. Money, you got to make money. Then we got to invest in wealth building opportunities, right? That's the key here. So what do you want? You know, you, you want to continue to make your 
contractor fee and, you know, maybe do okay and you can pay the bills and buy a new truck and take some vacation, or do you want to build some wealth? And so wealth delivers happiness. Uh, I own a bunch of real estate. I, I don't even go there very often. I get checks. Uh, that's, that's happiness. You know, uh, it's great to feel comfortable without having to worry about your income every month. And if you own real estate, it's going to spit out income. Obviously, if you lose some tenants, that's a big issue. So we have to, you know, weigh the risk and all those kinds of things. But what do I, what do I want? I want I want happiness. I want I want freedom. When you have income producing prop properties that you don't have to work at every day and do bids and estimates and schedule crews, you've got the freedom. And you also have health, wealth, happiness, happiness. So to me, wealth is what financial independence will do for you. Early on, I made a personal goal to live the good life, get out of debt, personal debt. Uh, the only debt I have is some investment real estate. I don't have any personal debt. That's my goal. So what's your goal? To have debt? I always joke, what's your goal? To have lifetime truck payments or to have everything free and clear and have a great income? So the question is, what do you want? And so you got to think about it. It's time and money. Once you start building a little cash in your company, a little equity, a little profit, what are we going to do with it? Well, we got to invest it. You only need so much money to run your business. You know, you got to have several months cash flow and payroll and all that, all the things you have to have. You got to pay your overhead. But after that, what are we going to do with it? So I'm a firm believer: time and money. You hire people to let you do less so you can do more of what you want. It costs money to have freedom and to develop wealth. So that's what we're going to talk about today. So the first thing I always start with is know what you want. What do you want? What What do you want? Three years, five years, 10 years from now, where do you want to be? I started when I was in my mid-20s. You know, if you start when you're 50s, you got 20 years to make it happen by the time you're 70. If you start in your 60s, it's almost too late. You know, pro real estate investments take time to to really start pumping out the money. It takes time for the inflation and raising the rents. I just talked to my property manager this morning on one of my industrial parks. I'll show you a picture of it this morning. And when I bought it, we bought it for $3 million, and the rents were about $0.40 cents a square foot per month. Today, the rents are $1.50 a square foot per month. That generates a very large cash flow. And our debt has almost gone down to nothing. So our mortgage payments next to nothing. We have some expenses, but it's just incredible the cash flow that you can generate if you make it happen. So you've got to commit to make it happen. So once you know what you want, you got, you got to build a plan. So my plan when I was young in my 20s was to own 10,000 square feet of buildings to buy, invest, own 10,000 square feet. And if they spit it out, spit out 10 cents a square foot net to me, that would be great. That's a thousand dollars. And then the next year I got two thousand. The next year I got three thousand. In inflation, I got five thousand. Pretty soon I got a nice cash flow. But if I wait till I can afford it, which is never, and I never want to take risk, what if I'll be broke at 65? So what are you gonna do? So why are you in business? You give you what you want. You got to have a plan and you got to keep track. And you got to continually make progress. So when I do a vision statement for most of the companies I work with, you know, what do we want to do every year to generate investment portfolio of opportunities that create passive income and wealth? That's what I want you to think about. So, so as we get going, you got to think about every business owner will exit. You'll either die, you'll close or liquidate because you're broke. Your family, you'll, you'll give it to your family for next to nothing. Uh, and uh, or you'll sell your employees, which, you know, that's a hard one. That's really hard. And then you'll sell to a buyer. Now, in construction, only like 5% of all companies ever sell. It's really hard, next to impossible to sell a construction company that doesn't have repeat clients that don't bid work, that give you work. You have service contracts. You have regular, you have a management team that runs the business without you having to be there every day. Nobody wants to buy a job. They want to buy a company that works without them doing the work. So how do I maximize value so I can have something? 
Well, forget your business. Let's get your business organized. Let's get it to create a lot of profit so you can go out on your own during the week, Monday, Tuesday, and go do investment deals. That's what I want you to think about. I don't know about you, but I started building <clears throat> industrial parks for developers who were looking for investors to, to invest into the real estate development deal. And so I would throw in my contractor fee and I'd own 10% of the project or some number. And those just continually grew. I still get checks on projects I built in the 70s and 80s. I still get checks every month. Uh, some of it I put in my 401k or my, my retirement program. I, I mean, it's incredible. I invested in a, a, a bunch of those projects, many warehouses, industrial buildings, office buildings, and I'm still getting a check. So think about what you have to do. You got to start, right? You don't start, it doesn't happen. So what's your exit choice decision? Um, uh, so that the, the real deal is you watch 95 out of 100, 95% of all contractors follow the progress in the same sad, sad story. They keep working for, for some money, but they never really make enough to have any left over. Uh, they, they, so they got to keep working until they're 65 or 75 and then they got nothing. So that's the normal. Only one out of 20, only one out of 20 actually figures it out that you got to do more. So I used to joke when I speak at a lot of conferences, you know, the National Association of Plumbers, Electricians, the, the room, you know, there's a long room and uh, the guys all in the front of the young guys trying to figure it out. And in the middle, kind of the seasoned veterans in the back, so all the all the old guys that own real estate, they're sitting back there going, oh, man, what are we? This is great. And I'm just sitting here having fun. Let's go. Let's go to the to the event tonight, or let's go have some fun. They're just, they own real estate, so they own the building they're in and the property around it, and they're getting rent every month. So it's funny. So only one out of five, oh, excuse me, one out of twenty is really going to make it. So why don't you make a goal to be one out of twenty? Otherwise, you know, you have a choice. Here's your here's your business plan. Build wealth one real estate deal per year. You could buy one small house per year for, I don't know, some low amount of money. And uh, depending on what city you're in, if you're in LA, it's a million. If it's in, you know, I know some of you guys are in Cedar Rapids or whatever, you know, I don't know what cheap house is there. It's a couple hundred grand. So you can put 40 grand down and you own it and then you rent it and then you build it by another one and another one. So think about what your goal is here. And so we got to ch stop chasing money full time, stop, take four hours a week and go find real estate deals. That's what it takes. They don't show up in your office. You have to be proactive and go find them just like you have to go find and bid work. So the question is, what's your vision? What's your vision of success? What do you want? So I, I'm kind of obsessed with doing real estate deals. I love it. It's just so fun and so exciting. It's so rewarding to build something and own it. It's amazing. And you got partners and they can make money too. And everybody, everybody's in a, a happy party. And so one year I'm flying into Las Vegas. You can see the, uh, the uh, airplane there flying into McCarran. And we were looking for real estate deals uh, out of Southern California. I was mostly in Orange County, California doing them. Southern California. But the, the land prices were getting so high. We said, well, where else could we go? Well, Las Vegas, a one-hour flight, no big deal, and a round trip one day. So we, we flew over there, and I'm looking, and I see this site over here with a purple line around it on Whitney Mesa Drive, which is in, uh, you know, a part of Las Vegas area, right over, right near the airport. And we, I go by there, and it's for sale, golf properties. I give him a call. Uh, I have a real estate broker on my team, and he called and made an offer. We made an offer. We ended up buying it. So now what I have to do, I have to go down, I have to get some plans drawn. They didn't have this product type that I that I like, the kind of high-end industrial office building, you know, two-story in the front and big warehouse in the back. And these are small buildings, six, seven, eight, ten thousand 10,000 feet. And we figured, let's build a series of those And because uh, there wasn't any in the market. And uh, so, you know, we went out and we hired our crews and our contractors and eventually you start building the building. And and, um, you know, here's my team. Uh, we've got the architect in the middle, the, my contractor on the right, uh, and the guys with the suits. What do you think they are? They're the real estate brokers. And, uh, and there's me with my tie on like, 20 years ago. And it, it's, it's great. And it makes it happen. And we end up with a finished product, which started with a vision of what I want to accomplish. 
So I had to go be proactive. I had to go to the site. I had to make an offer. I had to go to the city. I had to do all those kinds of things. I had a vision. What's your vision for your wealth? And, and so I have the key is commit. You know, I, I run these hard hat biz groups, peer groups, mastermind peer groups. And what drives me crazy are some of the guys in the group never commit. They keep saying it's a good idea, but they really don't commit to grow their business, to increase their profits, to increase their product type, to hire good people. And because of that, they stay at the same place. And 20 years later, they're at the same place and they still don't have any wealth. So think about what your vision is. So creating wealth, you know, I started with buying a little duplexes. And these are just pictures, an idea. And then I bought some apart. I built some apartments. I bought a lot and built some apartments. And then I realized that, and, oh, and then I bought some houses in Mission Viejo, California. I bought like three houses and leased them out. And they all went up in value. And I, yeah, I broke even on the rent, but who cares? They're going up. And uh, then I uh, bought my own building. This is uh, next door. It's a very similar looking building. And and then, now I'm in my building and, you know, we got our own building. And um, then I, a friend of mine, a real estate broker, who's really was my best buddy, John. And uh, he, he worked for a big real estate firm, the big uh, one of the big commercial real estate firms in town. He said, George, I got this deal. We need to buy it. So uh, I go, what are you talking about? Well, it's three million. It's worth four. Three million. God, three million. Well, I can get a loan for two and a half uh, for for uh, you know twenty five percent. We need we need to raise. I, I can get a loan for like two 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 million or two and a half million or something. And uh, I I think we can get a loan for that. And then we're going to need like six or seven hundred grand to do the deal. I go. Well, I don't have seven hundred grand. I actually did have it in the bank because my company had grown and we're doing pretty good. But I'm going. I can't put all my money in real estate. I need it for cash flow and concrete and all the stuff. He says, come on, George, I'll raise all the money. You just help me. So we signed up to do this deal. 70, uh, we're 50-50. And uh, we raised six or 700 grand. And they got, uh, we ended up with 20% each. And the investors got 60% with a promise of a great cash flow. And guess what? A week before we closed, we were to close escrow, John says, I've only raised 100 grand. We need 550,000 more. I go, no way, John. You were supposed to do this. And he goes, well. So I work with my bank and I squeezed 550 grand and wrote a check. And I ended up owning 60 or 70% of the project. And that's the best decision I ever made. This property right here spits me out 20 plus grand a month. It's 20, we've owned it for over 20 years. And I just got a call this morning uh, regarding this project from my property manager. Three of these units, it's uh, 80,000 square feet. It's like 40 units. And uh, three of the units caught on fire this morning. And the firemen were out there and I got a bunch of pictures. I'm like, ah, actually just called me right before we started. And uh, uh, anyway, we got it handled, but uh, I'm not even out there. The building... Got three units, had a fire inside. One unit started, and we went to the other one. And I'm not even out there. I've got a property manager who runs all that. She's got her own contractors. And I don't do the construction. What? Well, I don't want to do that. It's like little stuff. So, uh, you know, we need a painter. She takes care of it. I get. I, I look at the bids or need to patch the asphalt or whatever it is. So, so and this is an old beat-up, dumpy building in Santa and I bought. And I got a bunch of investors. I don't remember what we paid for it, a million five or something. And uh, we end up selling it for two and a half million, like three years later. It was great. I mean, we spent a, three or four hundred grand fixing it up. That's fixed it up right there. <laughs> and and then, you know, one of my clients said, hey, do you want to invest uh, with me in this project? Uh, I don't have enough net worth to uh, to do the deal. My bank wants a stronger person. I go, OK, I'll sign with you. So we split it 50-50 and got some investors. And I was the contractor. And um and uh, I got the contractor fee and part of the development fee and part of the profit. So it's just like, keep your eyes open, right? And uh, then I then I started, I brought in a partner and he got a third and I got two thirds and his job is to go out and find deals. And he went out and found real estate. This is my project in Orange. We developed, uh, I don't know, I think around 10 buildings. They're all around eight, 10,000 feet. Sold them all out, leased them all up. God, what a beauty. We double our money. And my investors are happy. This is another project. One of my old clients 
had a, a 200,000 square foot park in San Bernardino, California, all designed. He needed some horsepower for the loan. I said, I'll do it with him. He got, uh, I, I think we split it 50, 50 and the, he got uh, the bank to put up the money and shoot. I got 200,000 square feet of construction at a great fee negotiated. And, uh, you know, we ended up selling it and making some money. So it's just be creative, push for it, make it happen. Then I developed another project in San Clemente, California. This one was a beauty. It's, I don't know, 60,000 feet. I can't remember. And we built nice stuff and sold them out. So how do we create wealth? How are you going to do it? So so it starts with a vision of wealth. So you gotta, you got to make a profit. you got to make a profit. And then once you make a profit, we got to start pulling some back. What can we do in Vegas? You don't put all your money on the next. You win a hand, you don't put all your money. You pull some back. And and when you build a construction company, you pull some back and you use it for investments. You don't just keep spending it on you know more equipment or more depreciating assets or or a bigger house. You keep keep thinking about the future. You postpone your future and you don't mortgage your future by overspending on personal things that uh, just suck you dry and there's no money left for investments. So you got to be relatively fiscally conservative and also take risk on your future. So we make profit, which develops equity in your company. You grow it to the point you don't need all the equity. You know, you need six months cash flow or whatever you need. That's all you need in a bonding company to do 10 million. You, need a, you know, you need roughly a million dollar equity. You don't need two million. So some of these older companies have got 20 and 30 million sitting in the bank for what? They're only doing 40 million. They need 4 million to run the business. And they got another 10 sitting there. I'd rather own apartment building than a bunch of rusting iron. Right. And so then you build some wealth by going out and finding investments, whether it's real estate or whatever it is. And then you end up with freedom. So, I mean, it's a step-by-step. -step. It's pretty simple. Wealth allows you to make choices. I don't have to take cheap jobs. I, I can hire good people. I can do all the things I need to do. I can take some time off because I got a strong management team. I can buy a second home somewhere that's not overpriced that I can enjoy. And if I, worst case, I can make the payments on it if I have to, right? No wealth keeps you stressed out, mentally screwed up, et cetera. So what are we going to do? So what do we got to do? I finally realized that uh, my company is in the opportunity business. My friend John and I, I said, what do you do? I'm an opportunity broker. Well, I'm an opportunity builder. I'm seeking opportunity. Opportunity for me to grow my business and my wealth at the same time. If I'm building and the developer or I'm building and a partner with the, with the developer or the building owner, I'm building two things at once, you know. And that's what I want. So what I have to do, I have to make a profit. I have to build wealth. And I've got to generate cash flow. And then I can enjoy the freedom. So it's a really simple formula. So what business are you in? Are you in the dirt business? Are you in the electrical business? Are you in the wealth building business? Are you in the opportunity business? And if you just invest a couple hours a week, you know, real estate's not going to show up. You got to go find it. You got to find the right broker. You got to find the right site. You got to get to know the market. You got to understand the financing. You got to get to know bankers. You got to understand attorney and LLCs and agreements. So it's it's no harder than construction. You just got to spend time learning about it. You can't just show up and be a developer. You've got to learn about it. And the best way is just do it. Buy a simple apartment, little two, two bedroom uh, house or a duplex. And figure it out. Just do it. Get started. I mean, if you never start, you're never going to finish, right? So I finally realized I, I'm in business for these guys that were developers, and they're in Aspen while I'm working my fanny off. You know, why am I in business? I got to get into the opportunity business uh, and move to the right level. Okay, so a couple of rules, and we'll get into the performer. Um, all right, so first couple of rules, I've always used these, and these are these are. I, I think I love them. And uh, so what's the best investment if you want to grow your wealth? A bunch of equipment that depreciates every month and you got to replace it? Yeah, you can work it, but half the time it's sitting there. If you're not getting a 75% utilization, you're probably going backwards. Plus it's getting older and worthless every day. Uh, or maybe a new pickup truck. 
yeah, that's a good investment. That'll really make you a lot of money. Um, or, or maybe a, a controller, a really good controller, accounting manager, a full charge bookkeeper who's su super certified in construction accounting. Sure. They can handle everything you need. So my rule number one, <coughs> excuse me, hire a pro at your accounting team if you want to grow and profit. You got to have somebody who knows more than you about construction accounting. And most of us tend to want to hire somebody who can barely pay the bills on QuickBooks or something. you got to have a professional. A professional costs you about the same as a project manager versus a secretary. And uh, they'll they'll do it for you. They'll help you figure this out so you don't have to spend all your time figuring out the books or waiting for reports or never getting them until you do your taxes in April or May or June or October, right? And so, uh, you know, you need a CPA, you need a a, a accounting manager, you, you need a coach, you need a planning facilitator, you need a trainer. You, you know, there's a lot of things you need. And if you don't can't afford it, start with the start with a bookkeeper, right? Somebody who really knows their stuff. Number two, you know, you got to have software. You got to have you, you got to get into the '90s. You got to have fully integrated software. And when you have real estate, you got to have software for that. You can't just uh, do everything on a checkbook and hope it works out. You're going to have to do monthly reports for your financial managers, uh, for your investors, for your bank. Uh, when you go get a loan, you know, I just got a, a request from one of the properties I own from the lender. They want my updated financial statement, the cash flow for the project, then a rent roll. I mean, I can't do that manually. I got to have a software that does all that. So number the, the really the best rule ever Buy your first rental property before your before your second truck. Postpone the truck. Rent a truck. Buy real estate. Take your cash and buy real estate. And you can get it financed. You know, yeah, financing is weird now. It's a little high, but it's not that high. I, I was doing development when you couldn't get a loan less than eight or nine percent. That was normal. Well, that we're back to normal. This three percent money was stupid cheap. And uh, it doesn't really work for you. So think about what you can do to take your company to the next level. So buy your first rental property before your second truck. So the question is, are you on the path to becoming a poor business owner or a wealthy business owner? A poor business owner borrows money, rents their office, owns a lot of equipment, cash flows tight, works 10, 20 hours a week, a day. It's always out on the jobs. Uh, never has enough time for their family. They bid low to win work. Their subs are always on speed dial. They read the plans and they postpone their vision. A wealthy business owner takes some money and invests it, takes a risk. They own their office. They own their yard. They, they start an investment program for their wealth. Uh, they work part-time on their business and part-time on their investments. They play golf weekly with customers, bankers, and investors. I used to take my banker golfing every couple months. It's just part of the deal, and my investors. Um, I've got two golf uh, matches set up for this week and next week with some of my clients. Um, so I spend my time finding, seeking, looking, and managing investments. And I, I'm very active in the charity community. I'm involved. I'm on boards. I donate money to charities. I'm a big deal in the city. Not not a big deal in my head, but you know what I'm saying. And uh, I, I read business and investment magazines. And, of course, my business works. So think about what you're trying to accomplish here. Uh, is your business an asset or a liability? Uh, so first thing we do is we got to have some cash flow. Then we make some profit. Then we build some equity. Then we look for investments. And then we start generating passive income. And then we start building some wealth. So it's a step by step. You've got to see the vision for the future. So my goal is to own a business that works without me doing all the work. It goes up in value, creates equity and wealth so I can move to the next level of investments. All right. So wealth is created from assets that make money. They don't, and they go up in value without you doing much of the work. So a construction company, you gotta work it all the time. 
So that that's a, that's an asset, but is it really what you what you can live on in the future? So assets, uh, the business works for the owner. I'm the owner, not the worker. It creates a valuable sell, sellable business. No, but I can just listen. It uh, it it it's very passive. It's not hands on. I mean, I literally don't go to my properties more than once every month or two. It reduces debt with steady profits, and it's passive in debt. And it goes up in value and builds equity over time. So liabilities, and appreciates, of course. Liabilities uh, cost money to own, and you got to work them. Very hands-on equipment. you got to work it. So, so, you know, what does it do? It... Uh, you got to work for the, you got to work it. You've got to, it's generally a low value. It depreciates. You got to spend more money to keep it working. Uh, it has, it doesn't really grow. Doesn't really grow and, and make, you know, it makes a little profit sometimes. It doesn't, uh, it doesn't let you not worry about it. And it requires debt, more debt. And it's hard to sell. At the end of the day, you you know, you buy equipment, it goes down, right? And of course, it depreciates in value. So think about where you spend your money. You know, I always I look at guys' P and Ls all the time in their balance sheets, and I go, "Why do you have so much equipment? Some of it you hardly ever use." I go to their office and I look in their yard. It looks like a two acres of rusting yellow stuff. I go, "Why don't you sell all that and buy an apartment building? Uh, I might need it someday. Rent it." Apartment's going to keep, excuse me, going up in value. So is a truck an asset? No. Is a backhoe? Well, not unless it works by itself. Uh, I never own my own backhoe. I just rent it, owner operate it, and then have to worry about it. I'd rather buy an apartment building. Uh, your home? I, I don't. We're not, well, I don't count my home. My my home is where I live, and uh, I got small industrial building and office building goes up in value. The rents go up. And uh, now you could also have stock, so it's up to you, right? So let's let's go to page three here. Let's go to the next page, and let's talk about developing real estate. Okay? So I've got a page three is a nice little checklist for you. And uh, so what do you do? I own a blank company. What's the purpose for your business? Why did you go into business? My so I can make money. Well, why? You want to make money so you can build wealth, so you can have a passive income, right? It, the purpose of your business is not to make money. It's to make money as a stepping stone to build opportunities and wealth. So hard work won't make you wealthy. Um, when you're doing all the work, you're never going to get wealthy. The more you do, the less you make. So, so where do wealthy business owners spend their time? On the job site or the golf course with customers and bankers? Do the math, right? So we got to make wealth building our top priority. That's me in an industrial park I built in uh, Orange, California. I call them all H Biz Centers. That was kind of my logo for all my parks. And uh, there's my partner Ken, the real estate partner, and he was an old banker. I, we were friends, and uh, he won the. He was on a bank board, and he, we he came to work with me, and we just did deals, and a lot of them over ten years. And so the question is. I'm a developer or a contractor. Why don't I do both? Who who does the most work? The contractor. Who hires the most people? The contractor. Who takes the most risks? The contractor. Who makes the most money? The developer. Why don't I do both? So, so here's some things that I've done. Decisions. Uh, what's your goal? Uh, uh, hang on a minute. There's a long list of decisions here. So on page three, wealth building decisions. Uh, what's your goal? How much income, passive income, do you want in five or 10 years? Are you willing to take some money out of your company on a regular basis so you can invest? How much money are you willing to invest and risk? <clears throat> what's your return on investment goal? So this is kind of your vision here. Are you willing to take risk? If you're married, are you on the same team? Are you willing to dedicate time to your investments? Are you willing to guarantee loans? Most construction loans require a personal guarantee. 
unless you're a 50 millionaire. <clears throat> do, do you, ha you have to do it alone or do you mind having partners? If you just haven't do it alone, you can do one deal, you're out of money. If you do 10 deals with the 10%, you can do 10 deals and they're all going to go up. But the the, the I, a lot of guys say, I don't want partners. Why not? You're a contractor. You got 30 partners out there working for you every day, subcontractors, suppliers. You, you can do 10 deals with, you can do three deals with the same amount of money with partners or four deals. Uh, you want a joint venture with your customers and throw in your fee? Well, think about that. Uh, you want to you want to do one project or you want to have many over time uh do you want short-term build and sell or you want long-term passive income so so i was doing a combination you want to build and sell because you can't you, you run out of cash so you can only do so many deals with the cash you have <clears throat> so somewhere we're selling and then we were investing in more somewhere we're keeping what kind of property do you want to own? Project types. Single tenant, multi-tenant. Uh, I've got a client that I built for for years. They build big buildings and they have one tenant and that's how he likes it. It's simple. It also is very risky. If the tenant moves out, you're broke. Where do you want to be? Do you want to be able to drive there? Do you want to be able to fly there? And what's your role to manage the property? Uh, my role is do nothing except watch it. So when are you going to start? That's the question. When are you going to start? <laughs> so some of the opportunities, you know, uh, we could we could buy an old house or a duplex. Uh, we can uh, we can buy an apartment building. We can uh, we can buy your own building. That's my building I I owned for years. Uh, there's my team. This is kind of a long time ago. Uh, you know, this is one of my properties I bought. It really was run down, and the bank worked with us, and we got an improvement loan. And we raised all the rents. And, you know, this is what it looks like now. We didn't do much, as you can see. But just that little bit, we could raise the rent like 20, 30 cents a square foot. And that really added value. Uh, here's the one I just told you about. That was when we bought it. And, you know, now it's a little bit cleaned up. Not much. But, and notice property managed by SoCal Real Estate. That's my property manager, uh, who I called this morning and talked about the fire. One of those units had a fire. Uh, so this is a, a developer we were going to build it, and he, ran, he didn't have enough money to get the loan. I went in with him. We split it 50-50. So, uh, you know, here's that building I showed you. Here's an orange project. Anyway, this is one in San Bernardino. So there's so many opportunities. You just got to ask. you got a developer. They, they always need money. They need investors. And uh, just say, hey, I'll throw in my fee, or how much do you need? I'd love to be a partner. But if you don't ask, you don't get if you're a concrete contractor, like I know a couple of you guys here are, just ask the developer if they need uh, equity, if they need some cash, some investment. Uh, and so think about what you can do uh, along the way. So you can generate wealth. And, uh, uh, and there's my property manager, Serena. She's the best. She does everything. She's going to fix that fire. We already talked about it. She's got a contractor on board already, not me. I don't want to do it. And she's got a structural engineer with the roof with the fireman came in and went through the roof and knocked all the doors out. <laughs> it's crazy. So uh, she's got all handled. I don't, I'm not even going to go up there. I said, call me if you need me to go by. I, I don't need to. But uh, she, she, we're repainting the place there. We She did all that. You know, I help her. I'm, a, I'm an asset manager. And, uh, and so what's at risk? So, you know, if we look at the opportunities, you can join venture. You can build your own yard. You can upgrade. When you upgrade property, you, you raise rents. It increases the value significantly. A small rent increase can easily increase the value by 25%. And so now you've made some money. So like industrial, a million dollar property, you raise the rents 10 cents. You just raise the value of the business around the building around 20%. You know, you you spend $5 in, in the value of the building with raised rents, about $20 more. So it's it's huge leverage. That's the key. So what do you have to do? You have to commit to risk time and money. So we need a uh, escrow deposit. Um, let's just walk through these on page three. Uh, let me grab, it, grab my notes here. So you're going to need to, oops, sorry. 
you're going to need to risk a, a down payment or money to go into escrow. So it's refundable money to go into escrow. So, you know, it might be 50 grand, it might be 20 grand, it might be a hundred grand or a million dollars on a big deal, but it's non-refundable. Now, usually they give you a, a look period, a due diligence period of 30, 60, 90 days to do your tests, inspections, to get a loan, et cetera. And then the deposit, what's called goes hard, meaning it's passed through to the seller. It's kind of like a penalty. If you're not going to close escrow, we'll at least get your deposit. You've held us off the market for three months. So along the way, you're also going to have to do your, uh, oops, sorry, your due diligence. You're going to, you might need a sales report, a structure report, environmental report, uh, uh, architecture planning. Uh, you might need to go to the city and get some approval processes started. You might need to hire a civil engineer to verify utilities and hookups. Uh, you might have some planning department fees because you're going to need all the lender is not going to loan until you've got an approved project, uh, at least in concept. You don't have to have a building permit, but you have to have a approval to build planning approval. Uh, we're going to need a loan commitment. Lenders are going to want to deposit to process the loan and they're going to hire their attorney. You're going to have to hire an attorney to create your uh, legal documents. Uh, the lender's going to want your attorney to sign off on the loan docs. And if you're going to have partners, you're going to need a, a partnership or a, an LLC agreement. And you're going to probably need an appraisal for the lender. So you're going to, you need to know that you're going to have to have some money that you're going to spend. Some of it's refundable. Some of it's not. You can't, you can't get money back from an architect. So that's, that's what I want you to think. So let me just stop for a minute. And anybody have any questions? Uh, anybody have any uh, questions on uh, any of these comments? Um, I'll open up for questions at the end for sure. Just put in the chat if you want to talk. Otherwise, I'll just keep going here, okay? So, you know, we're buying a million dollar piece of property. I got to have at least 100 grand set aside for due diligence and 50 to 100. If I'm doing a duplex, I, you know, whatever it is, a broke, what is it, a 17% down payment to deposit. And then you probably have a little money at the escrow. And then, you know, it's, it's a much lower risk. Okay. So that's what I want you to think about. All right. Okay. So the team, let's go to the next page. Page four, the development team. This is a picture of my dad, 1974, breaking ground with his three partners, uh, three or four. Not quite sure who one of the guys is. But my brother found this. We're cleaning out his house. He passed away many years ago and found this picture. I love it. It's my dad breaking ground. On a, he was a mobile home park developer, and he did really well. And the guy next to my dad's a guy in the white coat. The guy to his right is his next door neighbor. Then the two guys at the left are uh, investors. So there was a, those three guys were the investors, and they had partners. So they did it like that. So what are you going to need? You're going to need a developer. The developer is the guy who runs the park, runs the property, runs the project. He's like the owner. And then he can have partners or investors. And we're going to need a real estate broker. So how do we find real estate? We, we decide what kind of property we want to go after, project we want to do. And we find the best real estate broker who specializes in that kind of property in that area. That's the key. Don't hire your sister's brother's friend who builds houses. No, you want the guy. So when I'm going to do a multi-tenant industrial, I want the multi-tenant industrial real estate broker who does the most deals in the county and specializes in small tenant buildings. If I'm going to build a big warehouse, same concept. If I'm going to build a retail store, I want a retail broker. People specialize just like you as a contractor. You specialize. I want the expert in the market for that kind of property, all right? So then I'm gonna need uh, uh, investors on the top left. Um, I'm gonna need to make sure, if I don't have all the money, I'm gonna make sure I have some friends who are willing to invest with me on a shared basis. And I'm gonna show you the formula for that in a minute. I'm gonna need a broker, a mortgage broker, who's gonna find me a good loan. Now I can go find it direct with a bank, but in bigger projects, I get a broker 
who specializes in finding big lenders like life insurance companies or something like that, or Merrill Lynch or General Mo GM AC or something like that. Then I'm a construction lender. So most banks will do that. So I've got to build a relationship with a bank that has a construction lending department. And then I'm going to need architects and engineers. Now, if I'm not a general, I'm going to need somebody to build it. Hopefully I'm the general and I might need some subcontractors or specialists, depending on how you want to do it. For me, if it's under hundred grand, I just sub it out the whole thing. I don't want to, I don't want to deal with it. But one of my really strong needs is a, an attorney. I need a real estate attorney who specializes in real estate deals, real estate LLCs, real estate lenders. There, there's guys, that's all they do. And gals, that's all they do. Real estate. You don't want some guy who does your will and your trust and, you know, your company, your, your construction litigation. That's a different guy. You need a title company and you need an escrow company. So those will come when you go into escrow, the seller will say, well, I want to use Fidelity title, Chicago title uh, in their escrow department. And, and your real estate broker will tell you what he, who he likes. And over time, you'll develop relationships. Eventually, you're going to need a property manager. I see so many contractors buy a bunch of property. Then they have their assistant be the proper project manager. That's like dumb. Just hire, hire a property manager. It costs you 5% or something like that. It's nothing. It's peanuts. The lady I showed you a picture of, our rent on that property is about $150,000 a month. And I pay her like four grand a month, five grand a month, 5%. It's nothing. Now, maybe it's six grand. I don't know. It's, it's, it's free. I can't hire somebody for that. Uh, and then I'll need an accountant. Okay. So who's the most important? Most important is the guy doing the deal. That's the developer. Right. Right. So think about what you want what you want to make happen here. And so the process. Let's go to page five. Let's walk through the process. Um, okay, so I've got a long list of page five. I'll just slowly, quickly walk you through it. Number one, I got to commit to do it. I got to commit. I got to dedicate time to learn about it, find the right property, find a banker, find a lender, find a attorney, find a broker. So number two, I got to get ready to develop. I got to figure out how much money I got and how much money I need. So if I've got a hundred grand, that'll get me a thing worth three or 400,000. But there aren't any things that small. So I'm going to need investors. So I'm going to need a couple of investors if I want to do a million dollar property. Um, and then what kind of property do I want to develop or own? Location. Am I going to sell it? Am I going to lease it? What's my budget? Do I have a preliminary budget? Well, it should cost 60 bucks a foot or it should cost 100 or whatever it is. Uh, I gotta, I'm going to start building a list of potential investors. You know, my clients, my, my customers, people in my community. I used to call it FFCC, friends, family, and church and country club. That's where you find your friends. And uh, you can you just start asking people. A lot of people have money. You just don't even know it. They have a million dollars in their 401k that was a, an inheritance from their family. It's just sitting there. And they're putting it in the bank, you know, making two or three or four percent. They're trying to look for something that'll 10 percent, let's say. Um, and then I'm going to have to find an architect engineer. I usually know those already. Uh, the key there was escrow. Oh, excuse me, is uh, attorney. I got to find the right attorney. So I started asking my customers or developers, who's the best attorney for real estate? Say, oh, go call Joe or Susie over there. And so I go meet him and get to know him and tell him what I'm trying to do and start building that relationship. So that's part of that investment of time. Number three is really important. Now I want to find the best broker who handles what I'm trying to do in the market where I am. I don't want a broker... Yeah, I'm Southern California, in Los Angeles, who handles Orange County. It's not going to happen. They've got to be within 20 minutes, you know, so they can show the space, they can drive you around. And a good broker will drive you around, show you all the available properties, uh, the rents, so you can decide if it's pencils for you. And I always say, find me something that looks terrible that I can fix up and raise the rents. And so we drive around, and I say, I'm looking for something for $2 million, or I'm looking for two acres, 
uh, show me what's available and uh, do a preview, uh, look at rents. Uh, then I can do a, a budget, a feasibility, a pro forma. Pro forma is a fancy word for a budget. And I can go to the city, ask them what their setbacks are, landscape requirements, parking requirements, setbacks, all those kinds of things, allowable area, uh, parking required. And then I can hone in on a site and I'll make an offer. Number four, I make an offer and put up, put up a down payment and escrow deposit. And then I start doing my due diligence. Uh, so we sign a purchase and sale agreement. Um, we have my attorney review it. And uh, we, we find out what the due diligence and the terms of the escrow is, 30 days, 60 days, whatever it is, and the approval dates. And uh, we, we, we get all that sorted out. And then we do the due diligence. So you know what that is. You go to the city. Uh, you, you go to the planning department. Uh, you, they're going to want a preliminary design, a site plan. You got to go to public works to find out if you're going to need to extend the street or bring the utilities from down the road. Uh, you, you, can we get electric? Can we get gas? Can we get phone, internet? And then you can do a budget, a feasibility study. And then we can do some preliminary plans. These aren't totally in order. And you're going to create a little budget, mini budget, ballpark conceptual estimate. You're going to go talk to lenders, see if you can get them to say, I'm available, let's go. And you're going to get their loan app and uh, and you're going to draft your LLC or entity who's going to own it. Uh, because we need to have a, a structure for that if I'm going to get investors and partners. Even your lender will want, are you going to own it individually or you're going to have an LLC? And you're probably going to want an LLC. So now, number seven, we got to raise some more money, let's say. If you're going to do it all yourself, great. But Let's say we need more money. You know, we need a million dollars. But well, let's say we need 300 grand. I, I only want to put 100. I need 200 to raise, right? So I need to find a couple guys, four guys, put up 50 grand each. Uh, and then we need to uh, tell them what our role is. I'm the manager of the LLC or the general partner of a partnership. They're going to be investors or members, stockholders, but they're not the managers, the investors. And what's a profit split? What's the return on investment that they're, that I can entice them to invest uh, at what level? So my role as a developer, their role as an investor, uh, capital calls, profit splits. Then we're going to talk about the project and the, and the return on investment opportunity, et cetera. So then we get number eight. We get the attorney to prepare the LLC. Uh, we Then we fund it. Then we get a loan. We record the loan. And uh, attorney reviews it. They do an appraisal. They buy off. They tell you the loan. And then we release our contingencies and we close escrow. We fund the leftover money I need to close escrow, whether it's land or an existing building. Now, architecture and engineering, some of you are going to do early and some of you are going to do. Once you get the, the loan recorded, you know, you're not going to really get a loan unless you have preliminary plans approved. Some lenders will actually want a building permit. So, it just depends where you are and what you need. And so we need an architect, an engineer, landscape, soils, mechanical, electrical, all those things, civil engineer, utilities, and uh, pre-construction services from somebody. And then we got to process it through the city. You might have planning commission, zoning. You might have a parcel map required. You might have utility easements required. You might have to go to city council. Uh, Power companies are really strict. They take forever. And then we get a permit. Then we bid it out. No, not in this order. And then we uh, we build it. And I'm going to manage it as a developer. I'm going to hire a general contractor. I'm going to do it myself. Um, and then I'm, then I'm going to need a real estate broker to lease it or sell it. I want that sign up there with a brochure as soon as possible. And um, then eventually we lease it up. We finish the project. We lease it up. We season it. It's it's full now, and uh, it, now it's time to get a, a takeout loan or permanent loan because the construction is usually only one year, 18 months, something like that. And then we uh, get a permanent, you know, 25-year loan due in 10, and um, then we got to manage the property. So we asset manage the LLC, the CPA, do the taxes, do the insurance, uh, report to the investors, and uh, hopefully there's cash flow, right? Okay, so that's kind of a step-by-step -step process you know i may have missed some things you may have some questions uh 
So that's kind of the uh, general overview, all right? Okay, let's turn to page six. So let's say we're going to, number one, just do it ourselves with our own cash. You don't need to look at page six. Page six is if you're going to get investors. So generally, the lender doesn't like to loan on real estate to somebody who owns five things. They want a single purpose entity. They don't want to loan on this if it's commingled with other things. Because if that one goes broke, this one might go down with it because of the cash flow requirements. So they like to have single purpose uh, property ownerships. And it's generally an LLC, limited liability company. We used to use partnerships. I haven't done one of those in 20 years, but you know it's the same concept. It's like you own stock in IBM. You're a stockholder. You're not an owner. And so you're an investor. Uh, and then, the, you know, in a, I was a I was a uh, investor in a in a startup uh, computer software company, and the uh, there was there was the principals and there was the investors. So I was a, a an investor or a man a, a member member. I'm a stockholder member stockholder. Same words. So what are we going to do? We're going to split the ownership between fifty fifty down to ninety ten, kind of in that range on the handout here. I've got twenty to fifty. You know, I'm going to buy a simple project. There's not a lot of upgrade, not a lot of improvement. It's pretty simple, straightforward. I can pro I, I'm not going to add any value. We're just going to buy this house and clean it up. So I want 20% because I found the deal. I'm going to manage the deal and uh, run the deal. If I'm going to go and build something and have to go through the city and do all this, I want 25, 35, 45, 50% ownership. So it just depends on the risk factor and the amount of work required. So the manager is the developer, is the one who finds and creates the opportunity. And for that, there's value. Investors don't have any other value. They, so you've created the value. That's worth something, 10, 20, 30, 40%. So you're going to, as a developer, you're going to manage the development and the investment. You're going to do the budget and the performer and the cash flow. You're going to hire the broker, the lawyer, the the architect, engineers, the CPAs, you're going to do all that. And you're you're going to be the manager, the asset manager. Now, you can hire a property manager, but you're still in charge of the property. You're the managing manager. You're the manager of the project, the property. Uh, and you're also the fiduciary responsible. Yeah, I've, I've been an expert witness on a couple of cases where the manager stole all the money and you know, they're all ticked off at the guy and they sue him and he loses. Uh, so you're going to you're going to find investors. You're going to manage the investors. You're going to provide the initial seed money to get into escrow and the architect. And then you go get it back later when we, when we do the do the budget, record the loan. It'll all sort out. So anything you put in, it'll probably stay in. It'll, that'll be part of your equity into the deal. And um you're going to seek the lender financing. The lo you're probably going to have to guarantee the loan uh, unless you can get a non-guarantee non loan. You're going to do the budget. You're going to hire a contractor. You're going to manage a contractor. And then you're going to, uh, you're, you, if you're a property manager, you're going to get a management fee. If you're the asset manager. It's much less, you know, half percent, one percent. A property manager is three to six percent. Developer fee, uh, some lenders will let you have a three three to five percent developer fee. And uh, you know, we've got to hire a contractor, and that that's a third party transaction. The LLC is going to hire a contractor. Now, if it's your company, that's great. But you're going to have a contract between your your company and the partnership or the or the LLC. All right, at whatever the market rate is. Um, and then members, these are the investors, 50 to 80 percent under this scenario. They're going to put up all the money. So you as a manager are going to put up some money, but that portion of your investment will become a member. So we've got developer, no cash, investors, all cash. So the manager will get a percentage of the ownership for doing the work, creating the opportunity, not required cash. And then they'll also invest in the project as a member, uh, an investment partner. And I'll show you the perform on that. Uh, and then uh, to attract members, we've got to we've got to give them a rate, a return on investment. 
we got to hopefully get them six to 10% minimum return on investment. And they also, if we sell or whatever, we they get the first money back. I don't get any as a developer. They get the first money and then I share in the profit. And then uh, members aren't guaranteeing anything. They have no liability. Uh, if somebody slips and falls and sues you for a million bucks, they're off the hook. And then, so what do we want to think about? Deal points, single purpose entity. Uh, what if we need more money? What happens? These are things you need to discuss with your attorney. Who's going to guarantee the loan? Who makes all the decisions? Do the investors get to decide on decisions? Well, the answer is no. Um, distributions. So when we're going to sell or when there's money to be spit out, distributed, how are we going to pay it? Well, we're going to have an, a pecking order. We're going to have a, we're going to pay off the invoices, what we owe. We're going to pay off the lender. We're going to pay off the capital investment money. Then we're going to give a return to the investor, and then we're going to have a profit share. There's no profits until everything's paid. Now, on real income, it's a little different because you're not selling the property. We're going to pay off. We've got to pay the mortgage. we got to pay the property management expenses. we got to have some reserves. And then there's cash flow. And then we split that based on ownership. Okay, so it's a little tricky. This is 20, 30 years of putting on one sheet of paper, trying to walk you through it in 10 minutes, okay? So uh, we're still on good time. About half hour left, so we'll keep going here. Okay, so let's turn to page seven. Let's start looking at some numbers. All right. So on page seven, I have some uh, templates, and uh, this is a I just created this project, um, and you'll see it on the next page. But this is just a typical way. There's no right way. So we're going to do an LLC where we're going to have a manager and investors, or manager, member, developer, investors, all right? We're gonna have two levels of ownership, and we're gonna have different levels of cash flow and profit return. So the LLC manager uh, is going to put up, is gonna own 10 to 50%, depending, depending on what you can negotiate. The members are gonna own the balance. Now, people always say, well, I'm gonna, I'm, a, I'm the landowner, okay. Put the landowner in at the value of the land. If the land's worth a million dollars, that's what they get. They get a, they have a million dollars of equity. If we need three million, they get a third of the equity. So it's based on the value. Architect wants to throw in his fee. No, okay. We don't we don't give people free ownership. They're going to put in their fee at fifty grand, and if we need a million, they're going to own five percent of the total. So it's whenever we hire somebody. We're going to hire them, but if they want to do it for free, that amount of money we create as we put as equity. Some tenants want a piece. Sometimes a real estate broker thinks they're worth a lot of money. So, yeah, okay, if your commission's fifty grand, that will give you fifty grand credit as an investor. But you don't get any free ownership. That's the developer's piece. Now, if I'm a nice guy, I might want to give the broker a dollar or two, right? And uh, so, so it's all based on value. There's none of this free stuff and all this commingling and who does what. And uh, one of the guys on the line here, we were talking a few months ago, a few weeks ago, and his, his real estate uh, attorney wanted a piece of the deal because he did a really good job on real estate, you know, attorney work. No, just pay the guy. Don't give him free ownership because he's, you know, screw you. I'll hire somebody else, right? Probably for less. Okay, so here, here's the example of um, here's a, here's a just a simple example. We're going to have two two levels. We're going to have the managers and the members. So the managers are the developers, and maybe you're going to bring in a partner to help you. Maybe you're going to give some to your project senior project manager. Maybe you're going to want <clears throat> to do it all yourself. It just depends. Maybe you got a wealthy rich uncle who's going to uh, sign on the loan. Okay. So I'll take more than you. So in this example, the developer gets 25%. So I'm giving somebody 5% here. You can see 5% in the uh, second or third line. So, uh, but he's also putting up some money. Um, and uh, so we're going to split the profit. He gets 5%. And um, 
if you notice, he's putting up 280,000, but it, it's the same nu number down below. That's the rich uncle, right? So he gets 5% for helping me in signing the loan. I get 20%. That's 20%, 25% ownership. Now, preferred return, we'll cover that in a minute. So then the investors get the balance. They get 75% ownership. So they put up all the money divided by 75%. So if they put up, uh, you know, 700 grand, they're going to own 75% of the project. So we split it down by profit sharing. So that's that's their money divided by the total times 75% is the profit sharing column. And usually an LLC is a stock company. So we start with a thousand shares and we, uh, uh, you know, or in this example, we got a thousand. Oops, sorry. We got a thousand. We got 250 for the developers and 750 for the investors. So that's profit sharing. Uh, all right. So that's how it works. Now, preferred return, sometimes to entice investors, we say when you put the money in to the bank account for the property, we're going to start a, a preferred return. We're going to get it's like you're lending it to the property, to the prop to the LLC. So we'll we'll you we're going to pay you a seven percent return from day you invest until we're done. So that's going to get paid before we have profit sharing. So it's like you're guaranteeing the investors a small percentage bank loan fee, seven percent, whatever it is for their investment. So that makes them feel good. Well, at least I'm going to make 7%. The deal goes south. So if we go to sell the deal and they get that first, and then that's why it's preferred, and then we split the profit. Okay? So that's pretty clear on page seven. Now, by the way, um, I also have, um, uh, I can show you my Excel spreadsheet, which I sent you all. Um, I need to stop and start sharing again. Stop. And then I'm going to sh share. I'm going to show you the LLC, uh, excuse me, the Excel spreadsheet. <clears throat> so I sent you my generic standard LLC real estate performa budget right here. So, you know, it, it's kind of following along with the with the example in the handbook, in the, in the workbook. All right. So I've got one over here for a, a 20,000 square foot building. And then I got one to the right build your own building so you can it's a smaller building it's the same same basic formula though so we'll come back to that in a minute and i'm going to go back to the slideshow here we go okay so we're back to the slideshow now and the workbook all right so here's the uh Here's the uh, formula on page seven. So let's go to let's go to uh, page eight. Page eight is a budget. All right. So we're going to build this building. We're going to buy this land. The land is fifty thousand square feet. It's a site we drove by. We like it, and we're going to build a building similar to the one in the picture. So we're going to have a two tenant building, and the coverage that's building to land is around 40 percent that's pretty normal for industrial buildings offices less retails less why each type of project requires more parking in in industrial it's usually two cars per thousand square feet so a twenty thousand square foot building needs 40 cars which means that's how much land you need for the for the driveway and the cars a retail building it's one per one car per 100 square feet, a restaurant one per 35 square feet. So that's why there's so many cars in a parking lot, because that's the requirement. So it's all about the, the balance between cars, square footage, user, uh, uh, I call it coverage, site coverage. So in this example, we're building a 50,000 square foot building, uh, 20,000 square foot building. It's got a little front uh, two story. So the 20,000 feet, includes the 5,000 feet of office. So it's not a 25,000 foot building, it's 20,000 plus five. Uh, uh, it's, it's, it's less, it's 15,000 plus 5,000, okay? Don't get confused. You, the, the second floor is, a, is square footage. We've got 40% coverage, we got 40 parking stalls, all right? We're gonna buy the land at $7.50 a square foot. 
We're going to build the building, turnkey everything, for a million nine, 95 bucks a foot. Then we got architecture, engineering permits, indirect costs. That's your insurance, legal, accounting, overhead fee, contingency. The lender's going to make you have a 5% contingency. Maintenance during development, you build it, you got to rent it out. You still got to mow the lawn and things wait until you get it full. Then we're going to have to pay a leasing commission for a lease. Then we're going to have a construction loan. We're going to have a, a, a finance fee and interest during construction and lease up. So there's that. Now, in the performa in the Excel, it shows you how to calculate those. So we've got a total project of $2 million. Eight. $2 million eight. And we're going to get a 75% construction loan. So we need seven hundred grand cash invested, just like the previous page showed. Okay? So now let's move to the next part. We're going to sell it. So we're going to sell it based on value. There's two ways you sell. You're based on income. You're based on value. So in this example, we're saying we can sell this thing, and we got two columns. The, the left column is based on value of 165 bucks a foot. That's the market. So we got three million three, cost you two eight. Sales commission, we netted three hundred and thirty-five thousand. So now we're going to split it between the developers and the members. So the investors are going to get the first preferred return, seven percent over eighteen months or whatever it was. So we've got two hundred seventy-eight thousand left to split. So now the developers get twenty-five and the investors get twenty-five. So we've created a nice little return for our investors down at the bottom. Equity was 700,000. The, the investors got 57,000 uh, plus 208,000. They got 265,000, which is a nice 18.9% return over the year and a half or whatever it was. So, so this will attract investors. They're going to get an 18% return over two years. That's pretty good. Where are they going to get that? So, plus you own real estate. And if you keep it, it's going to go up in value. Now, the other way we look at investments is based on the cap rate, capitalization rate. So, you take your net operating income, which in this example is 231000 It's in the performer. You'll see how it's calculated. And we're going to use a cap rate of 6.5%. So, that's a cash on cash return. So, at 6.5%, that means the project's worth $3,500,000. You divide 231,000, which is your net operating income after expenses, divide by 0 0.065. That means the value is 3 million five. You can see the value is higher. Now, cap rates on really nice properties are as low as 4%. On really bad properties are eight, nine, 10%. So it's a variable. You have to find out what the market is in your, in your area for the type of project you're building. If you're building a building where Walmart's gonna be in it, you got a pretty a pretty safe deal. You could probably get a 4% return. Your value is much higher. If you're building a building for a loser company, you're probably lucky to get 10% or in a bad area of town or something like that. It's going to go up to 10. Now, so if you divide 231,000 by 10, it's only worth 2 million three. So that's a really bad area. So you just got to find out from your broker what was what properties are selling at in your community. <clears throat> so in this example, the right where it's based on six and a half percent cap, it's we're going to make five hundred fifty eight thousand. We're going to make a lot more money, and then we're going to split it down below, and you can see all the numbers. So that's even a higher return. That's a thirty two percent return to the investors, which is fantastic. Man, that's like. You know, this I think I've got a eight and a eight and a six, 14 months or 18 months. Uh it's in the Excel. I'll show you in a minute. Okay. So it it's simple, but you got to know your stuff, right? All right. So let's go to page nine. Uh this is on a rental. Page nine is a rental. So we're gonna do the same deal. We're gonna have a 7525. And uh Total cost, everything's the same. Investors have 700,000, own 75%, have 7% 7 preferred. So, oops, sorry. We get a dollar five rental, dollar five rental, 400,000 a month minus expenses. So, 81 cents, that includes property management reserves and some other small things. The tenant's going to pay everything else. So, that's subtract 
20,000. Uh, oh, 231,000. Did I, did I make a mistake? Uh, I think I got a mistake there. The NOI would not would be more like 300 and something thousand. I think I got a typo there. Uh, dollar five a square foot per month. Anyway, I think the 400 grand's wrong. Uh, I'll check it on the Excel in a minute. So circle that right there on the right. And uh, we're starting at the 400 grand and uh, make sure that that's, uh, we got we to gotta, we gotta make sure we got the right numbers there. So a dollar five a square foot times 20,000 feet. Dollar point oh five times twenty thousand. Oops, one point oh five times twenty thousand equals times twelve. Yeah, my rent's only two hundred fifty-two thousand. That four hundred thousand. Yeah, that's right. Should be two hundred fifty-two thousand. That's the mistake. Okay, so make sure you fix that. Cross out four hundred and write two hundred fifty-two thousand. That's the rent. Dollar square foot per month times twelve. Times twenty thousand feet is two hundred fifty-two thousand. The two thirty-one is correct. Two fifty-two minus twenty thousand is two thirty-one. Okay, so so we got a permanent loan of uh, payments are one hundred seventy-eight thousand a, a year, and we ended up with a, a cash flow of fifty-three grand. So right out of the box, we're making fifty-three grand a month. So now let's sell it or own it. Let's sell it. Uh, the, the sales price is a cap rate of 6.5%. So we take the NOI, net operating income, net operating income, and that's, that's the key number, NOI. That's the number. That's the buzzword you got to know. So NOI is 3 million five. So the property's a different number. It's worth 3 million five. Less our costs, less sales commission, 588,000. We're going to pay the preferred return. We got a 474,000 left for profit split. And it's 355, and the developer makes 118. And uh, but let's look at the bottom of the page. The developer manager is also the contractor. So the contractor fee is going to make 140 grand, 8% fee, let's say. He's going to make a developer fee of 76 grand, and he's going to get 118,000 profit. He's making 436,000 versus just being a contractor and make 140,000. Plus, you own the property and it's rented out. So this is, I mean, this is like, duh, you got to do this, right? It's its obvious you got to do this, right? So think about what your goal is here. I mean, that's crazy. Why not do both? Okay, so on the Excel spreadsheet, it's the same formulas. I've got a print, up, print out here. Uh, they all tie together. Be very careful when you enter numbers in the cells that it hits the right cell. Some of these tie together, so you gotta be careful. And if you see something change, you gotta go back and find out why. So be very careful that you, you don't mess up the cells. <laughs> so we're gonna build it. We got a shell building, we got a tenant improvement, we got site work, we got some upgrades, we got some improvement costs. Now, if you you can use this, this, form, this uh, template for anything. You can use it for a single family house, you can use it for a but you just got to change the change the, the the numbers, right? You can't just use these numbers. You start up here with twenty thousand feet, and it enters the cell over to the left, uh, and five thousand foot of office. Okay. So then you got your architecture and engineering. So you've got don't use my formulas here. You decide what you're going to pay for an architect and two fifty a square foot, twenty five cents, twenty five hundred bucks. You decide architecture, blueprints, civil engineering, plumbing, electromechanical, soils. You decide. And then permits, you got to go down to the city and find out what it's going to cost. If this was in California, that two dollars and five cents would be eleven fifty. In Texas, it's probably free. I don't know. I'm joking, but anyway, you can see at the end of the day, uh, we've got forty-one thousand in permits, seventy-six in indirects, um, and then construction and land. So we bought land. So at the bottom of page ten, we've got the the rest. We've got indirects. Uh, we've got builder's risk insurance. You're going to need builder's risk, fire insurance, whatever. LLC liability insurance. We're going to need legal and accounting, property taxes. You own the property, and we're going to have it for eight, uh, 14 months, eight months to build, six months to lease. We're going to get our developer fee and our contingency. And we're going to also have maintenance during lease up. We've got to mow the lawn, water the lawn, five, pay, do some trash. It's an electric bill, 500 bucks, 3000 The rent's a dollar. 
So we get two forty a year, lease and commission. So uh, that so our subtotal is two million six. We're going to get a seventy five. Look down here at the bottom. We're going to get a seventy five percent loan, two million eight times seventy five. It's two million one. So we're going to get a a two million one loan from details below. We're going to have to pay a loan fees in one percent. You got another 1% for legal appraisal, closing, title, all that stuff. Now, during construction for eight months, you're gonna, they're gonna fund the construction every month. And generally we use a number called 65%. So, so if we do a cash flow over the period of the loan over eight months, you know, the first month you don't borrow any, and then you borrow more and you borrow more, but it generally runs about 65%. Now you have to do your own cash flow. That would take another three, three Excel spreadsheets. Then we've got interest during lease up. So we had six months, we figure it's half leased, uh, 39 grand. And then you got your, now if we're gonna uh, get a loan fee at the end of the deal, we get a permanent loan fee. Now you can put that in the performer or you can put it in later. So we ended up with 2 million eight. 2 million eight, 700 equity, 2 million one in, uh, uh, we're on page 11, we scroll over to page 11, it's the top of page 11. For, for most of this page here on the on the screen, okay? Now let's do a real estate performer in the middle of page 11. We're gonna sell this rented property, sales analysis. It's the same everything, so sales, $1.65 a square foot, 165, minus commission, uh, cost 2 million eight, so we got 334,000, it matches the, the, the uh, slideshow I already showed you. Cap rate, dollar, cap rate of um, rental income. Oh, we're selling it based on price. This is on based on market value per square foot. So we're coming up with that NOI. Now, NOI is, is uh, taxes, insurance, and landscape are paid by the tenant and utilities. It, it, triple net, 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 net. So the landlord's just paying repairs, reserved, and property management. The tenant's going to pay for all the other stuff. Now, industrial gross, I'm the owner of the building. I pay for all the stuff, and I, and I include that in the rent. So that's a higher number. On my property, I showed you that my, my expenses are several hundred thousand a, a year. So my rent has to cover that. On this example, we're using triple net. Okay, so we're 231,000. And uh, uh, down the bottom of page 11, and then uh, we get a permanent loan amount of two million one down to bottom of page eleven, seven percent payment rate. We have fifty three thousand spendable, which matched the other slide I showed you. Okay, so let's turn to page thirteen and just continue this example. Top of thirteen is sales analysis right here in the middle. We cap rate at six and a half. If the sales price is higher. We have a higher profit distribution, 580,000, and it works out to a return of really nice, 24%. Cost on cost, return on equity is pretty nice. So uh, it's a great deal. And then let's scroll to the bottom of page 12. Investor, um, net available, LLC ownership and return, page 12, top of the page, uh, middle of the page. Uh, below the black bar. So we've got George and Sam, and then we got, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna own 20% because I'm the developer. And Sam's gonna own 5% because he's helping me. I'm also gonna invest 175 grand and Sam's gonna put up 140 grand. So we're, we're, we're 25% free ownership, development, oops, sorry. And then I've got, uh, and then down here as an investor, I'm going to get another 18 and, oops, sorry, 18 and 15. FFCC, Friends, Family, Church, and Country Club, you know, we got 70 grand from our pals. The broker wanted to throw in his fee. The architect wanted to throw in his fee. So we just put it in as cost. The rich uncle put in 280,000. So here's their shares. And here's the profit sharing, which adds up to 100. So we go to sell it. We made 588,000 from the top of the page. And then we pay the priority return, preferred return, 57,000. It's over 14 months. And uh, it works out to 
nice little 116,000 percent. But anyway, it's 530,000. So that so that's available that we can spit out to the team. And then at the bottom of the page, we're going to split it up. So we've got 580,000. Uh, me and my partner Sam are going to get 106 and 26, and the and the members are going to get uh, 588,000. Uh, let me see, one, two, three, four. Well, 588 is total. The column that says return, that's total. So it's not a subtotal, it's a total. And then uh, I'm going to look at my contractor fee. I made 140 overhead fee, and I made a profit. So I I, I did great. I made 436,000 as a developer. Now, I'm going to keep it. So, so uh, hey, this thing's, I'm not going to sell. I'm just going to keep it. I'm going to keep going along. But the key is I only had to put up 175 grand of this $3 million property. Now I got another 100 grand. I can put in another one and another one rather than putting all... Uh, rather than put all my money, the seven hundred grand in this deal, I own one deal, and I'm done with, I'm done until I make another five hundred grand, right? Which might take forever. Okay, so that's kind of the, the thought. The Excel has it all there. You can you can just make sure you double check the numbers. So as we close out, just you know, what's a perfect business? What would it be like for you looking back five years from now? What what would you have that you don't have now? What do you want that you don't have now? Uh, you know, I've got to create some equity. I've got to build some wealth. And, uh, you know, am I going to own apartment buildings? Am I going to own industrial buildings? Am I going to own houses? What are you going to do? Uh, these don't take a lot of work. I go to this property right here that spits me out over 20000 a month. I go out here as the manager once every month or two. That's it. My Serena, my property manager, does everything. She's out there right now with a fire contractor figuring it out. And uh, she called me right before the session and said they had to get a structural engineer and she said, I'll take care of it. I got a, I got a couple I could refer to, but I'd rather have her do it. I don't have to deal with it. So build wealth, create equity, make a profit, get started. So the question is, what's your plan? What's your plan? I've, uh, in my peer groups, I always encourage guys. When I coach, I always encourage people. What are you doing about your future? And they always say, I'm getting around to it. I'm trying. Trying means no. Getting around to it means never. Uh, you're either going to do it or you're not. So I want you to think about what your goal is. So years ago, uh, what, 2012-ish, 20, 10 or 15, 12 years ago, I, I finally hung up a sign on my construction company. That was my building. And this is the sign I hung up. Closed. We made enough money. Office for rent. So I get rent on that building, and I still have a bunch of buildings. I'm not doing any construction. I'm doing this, which I love doing. I love helping people. And it's really my passion is to help people, you know, take their company to the next level, improve, hire, you know, org charts, P&L, all those things. But the ultimate goal is to deliver what you want. And if you're not making it happen, you got to make it a priority. Okay? So that's my program for today. I want to thank you for being here. We'll open up for questions in just a moment.